The fair weather over Celtic Park today brings the usual large crowd and with it an optimism which reflects the confidence of both team and support both of which are looking forward to an exciting week of domestic and European football. Well, there's no debut for Robert Douglas today given that Jonathan Gould is to be played on Thursday in Bordeaux. Lubo Moravchik is out and Bobby Petter is in. Apart from that, no other major changes. And on the other side from Bobby Petter, DJ Egat, the Frenchman who had a, an absolutely explosive debut last week, running the legs of St. Mirren's defence. Well, Martin O'Neill has expressed surprise that United have slumped so badly after the opening game against Celtic. Slump is a diplomatic word to use, I would think. Four changes from the side beaten 4-0 by Hart. McQuillan starts for Stephen Wright, as does Benitez and John Lachina. And back in the side, Craig Easton, Scottish under-21 cap, and who scored a spectacular goal here last season. The referee today is John Underhill. Well, you know, look at the league situation and you have to say to yourself, if Dundee United get away with even a point today, it surely signifies the age of miracles is not yet over. Now, Alex Smith is a very experienced and respected coach and he must realize that given what has been happening recently, he really has to get something special out of his side today or else they could be in for a heavy defeat or perhaps even a humiliation. Egat. He's aiming for goal this time, held it just a little bit too long. Thompson. Beautifully spreading the play. Petter always eager to pick it up in that area there and make for the goal line as he does. Wow, that's remarkable. You really would have put your money on Chris Sutton finishing that off. Now, just how close was he? Beautiful play by Petter again. A touch of aggression, accuracy in the pass. And that really should have been put into the back of the net. Larson. Egat. Well, couldn't get uh, any break there at all. I think they must have been watching the video of last week to see how effective this man was in a one-to-one -one and consequently they've always had that extra defender in there Thompson's ball should curl in and it does so close as that came in here big men were up and just clipping the top of the bar one little buzz from this man, of course, could alter things. Yes, Larson. Petrov looking for a run by Thompson, which was happening right through the middle. Prefers to put that to Petter. Little mesmeric twist of the feet there. First, first time in the game he's really had clearance for a header like this but not with a strength that he would ideally have liked making it easy for Alan Coombe Davos and comes Thompson little shuffle again and again another corner kick well Thompson of course operates on the left that's his uh, preferred side much more effective with that left foot of his but he does have that little shuffle which takes him away from defenders. There's Coombe and that's the post. Alan Coombe missing that completely. Oh look there. It goes wide and there's the break. There's a little ball inside and it's stopped. And Lachina slid in there. There goes Larson. 
Just chucked away by De Boss, who's been playing outstandingly well. There he is, in the middle of the picture. Some not uh, very complimentary remarks made by Alec Matthew about this big fella, but I think he'll just shrug them off. And in goal! to pick his side up as he did in Aberdeen almost exact replica of the way he put it in the net at Petodre as I was saying they had this uh, defence covered so very well and at a vital time 11 minutes before half time up he pops again and a cluster of players and made it look ridiculously simple after all the hopping and puffing in front of goal that preceded it Oh, he'll be delighted by that. Must be delighted that he's got a player like Larson on his books at all that can simply get a go when uh, things are not just going the way anticipated. Played in there to Fuentes. Can't get it out strongly enough. That's a great save by Gould. It's always a very effective save by a goalkeeper when he's had hardly anything to do. And then suddenly up pops a shot like this, and a difficult one, hitting the ground in front of him, never easy for a keeper, but he made it look so. Easton. There's Thompson. Got a kick. Well, Tommy Boy not happy with it. Feels that uh, Thompson got the last touch there, they were both into it. Of curl and tremendous height in it, and it's I think it's an appeal that that ball had been over the line by the United players. Strong appeal there as that was played in, and that looked over the line. I must say, that was very, very close indeed. Need well, now when troubles come, they come in legions, as they say. There's the man who. Scored the only goal of the game, positive with the header. Halftime score though, Celtic 1, the D United 0. Well, I think at the start of the second half, it would be a safe bet to say that Martin O'Neill wasn't all that impressed by his 11 men out there in the first half. Yes, in the lead, yes, they missed chances, but sometimes they made very heavy weather of the way they came forward and allowed the D United occasionally to make interesting breaks. So expect, uh, I think, a sharper attitude in this half. Easton simply giving it away again, though. Well, there's a Celtic manager. Big task in front of him, of course. He's wanting to win this league championship and also do well in Europe. And first real test on Bordeaux on Thursday. Up by Thompson, but uh, nobody giving him any support there. Celtics Thompson with it now. He got now. Celtic supporters want him to run at this defence as he did St. Mirren so very effectively. Not so much today, though. Threaded beautifully through. Sutton going in for it. Well, Alan Kuhn was very brave to get down there. I think he took a knock on the head as well as you see him going into it. Sutton going in after the ball. He had to. Volkeren. Did that well enough. Wants to come forward himself. There's a run by Volkeren. Oh, get into a little bit of a tangle. It's a throw at the end of the day, but the supporters like that. A little bit more aggression. And that had them rising to the feet. Boyd covering Fuente as well. He gets away with it, though. He holds on to the ball just a bit too often, Fuente. Better now. Can he do the same again, Agat? Oh, slack with that one, decided to go on his own. 
Well, I don't think you could blame him. He looked up very quickly to see if there was any cover. And there certainly was. Obondo Atangana comes on in place of Fuentes. To Lambert. Is Valkeren. Uh, Thompson. Beautifully inside, that's a great goal. Picked up beautifully by Thompson, reading from that deep position. Well, he took it there superbly well. The second goal for the club, rifling it in. I think he would have preferred the left foot, but it doesn't matter. He hit that with a great deal of certainty. Beautifully touched down to him. Pressure still on. Look how wide Sutton's gone. Petrov. Usually taken away from Petrov. And you know that's a bad play when he can hold on to a ball in a position like that. Benitez, I think, uh, has like uh, too many of the Dundee United players in difficult situations held on to the ball too long without parting with it Thompson Ooh, just the way there Valkeren coming up lot of curl in it nah, no free kick ball taken away Easton with it Lays it out well, now Benitez. Easton tried to slip through, no offside, and that's a decided miss there by Thompson. Well, Thompson, fine player that he is, finds it difficult to score goals. Very often getting himself into good positions like that. Played well back uh, by Mvonda. There's McQuillan, and that's it, it's an own goal. Well, out of virtually nothing, Paul Lambert, as that ball was bouncing in the most untidy way in the box, somehow that happens to a player, even a fine player like Paul Lambert, taking it there first time and then. Putting it in, it's astonishing that Celtic should have conceded that after having had no trouble. I think uh, Jonathan Gould could have been in the stand at this stage. Mm. Fizzing. Fizzing. And Larson. Take a on very well. Larson coming in for the kill and taken away by the boss has been quite outstanding for United. The Canadian international at his very best. Nine minutes remaining. Oh, it's just over. Once again, Henrik Larsson, superb in the air. Lot of curling in it and nobody is there, that's a goal kick. And the final whistle goes, a uh, little bit of sense of relief about that cheer at the end by the Celtic supporters. It's not as if uh, the United posed any great threats in the second half, but at least they were resolute in defence and took it right down to the wire with, a, I suppose, a, a crazy goal. The first one, of course, coming from that man, Henrik Larsson, almost inevitably after near misses, popping up in a penalty area, as he so remarkably does so often to put something in the lead. And then a, a glorious goal in the second half. Sutton laying it onto Thompson, but it still had to be finished which it was with the right foot and then towards the end of the game just every now and again it was a breakaway by United and in a rather ragged uh, attempt to clear the ball it went into the net from uh, Paul Lambert
The final score is Celtic 2, the D United 1. We've got the goals at important stages of the game, obviously, but uh, it was always going to be a difficult game. I know I think that perhaps expectation was very, very high, the fact that we're top of the league at the moment mm. and that Dundee United are bottom. I think that people will think coming to Celtic Park, oh, this, this should be all right. But football's not like that. We came and we played much better than we've been playing. And we've came off the park with a bit of pride uh, from the game and, and, and hopefully that we can start to realise that it's Dundee United and we can start to, to pick up points.